Great. Okay. Well, I am Brian Thompson. I'm one of the facilitators for Copper Beach, and I am very excited to be here as part of Mental Health Connecticut's 31 Days of Wellness. I, like I said, I'm one of the facilitators for Copper Beach. I have my master's degree in mindfulness studies. And when I'm not facilitating mindfulness programming, I work in the public schools and special education. Um, bulk of my professional experience was also working with parents and children with trauma histories. So mental health, mental, mental health awareness month is something that uh, particularly resonates with, with my heart a little bit. So I'm very glad to be here. And also to, to speak and practice on the theme of our inner critic and self-compassion. Um, that's something that I think truly resonates and is reflective of, I think, the entirety of our, our life experience. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But first, I just kind of wanted to explain the uh, sort of how practice will, will work today, um, just so we have a little bit of guideline. Just give me one second, switching my views around here to make things easier. Here we go. So we'll start with some words just on the topic, the inner critic, its role in our lives and how self-compassion helps us to better come into relationship with ourselves and the world. Um, and then we'll shift into some guided practice. Actually, it's a, it's a few practices that can be done on their own, but for today's sort of presentation, I've kind of blended them together so that they can support one another as we explore these topics of self. Then I'll reserve the last few minutes if there are any questions or comments that anyone might have. So before I jump into that, are there any questions before I get started or anything that anyone would like to say? Okay, well, then I'm very grateful that you guys are here and, and let's dive in. So the inner critic, that voice that is inside of us, that is always there, the roommate who lives in our minds rent-free, but always has a constant need to pass judgment or some type of opinion on our experience of our lives. Our relationship with that voice is really the birthplace of much of our moment-to-moment -moment experiences. And depending on the dynamics of that relationship, it can have a very strong effect on our physical or our mental well-being. So we can be fine one moment, and then the next we find that we're suddenly carried away in feelings of doubt or worry about a decision that may have to be made. Um, furthermore, it's not limited to the present. You know, how many times have we been feeling okay, and then suddenly we remember something that happened five, ten years ago that just completely overtakes us. Um, it's these super strong feelings that suddenly become so visceral as we kind of have gotten caught up in this thought train of our inner critic and what's going on. Now that said, the inner critic's not bad. It, it has a role um, in our lives. It's actually very necessary. You know, life is hard. It can be very difficult. And we start to tell ourselves these, these stories and paint these pictures about what's going on as a way to shield our open hearts. Um, it means something's going on and we feel some type of way about what is happening in our lives. The challenges and the unease, they start to arrive when we forget that what our inner critic is saying, those snap judgments of our experiences, that they are stories, that they are words we are telling ourselves about the experiences, but not the truth, or at least not the, the full truth. And it stems from this fear that we aren't enough, that something has to be different about this experience that I'm feeling right now for me to be okay. You know, we deeply identify with these stories we tell ourselves and we go further along these tracks of the thought train and we often lose our inherent self, the, the part of us that exists here, now, in this moment, that has been, is, and will always have been enough. And self-compassion now, that's our reminder. That's our reminder that we are capable, 
that we have the tools and the ability to continue moving forward. It's also the recognition that love for ourselves and the knowing that if there is something that I do need to move forward, I can at any time take those steps to make it happen. You don't have to know the whole plan. I just need to be able to take that next step. And mindfulness practices and self-compassion gives us the ability to return to the present moment so that we can more easily take those next steps. So how do we begin to settle that inner critic in our mind, right? Well, we start with recognizing that that's how the mind works. The mind wants to try and figure things out, but sometimes it flies off the handle. And the more we practice, the more we start to realize, oh, there, there goes the mind again. It's okay. I just need to bring myself back to a place of presence. And we do this by first practicing, observing the happenings of the mind in a curious and non-judgmental way. So if you would, just for a moment, imagine a movie theater. In this movie theater, you can see the screen. And on the screen, you can see yourself acting out the stories of the, of the critic, of our inner critic what we think is going on, become attached to those experiences. Now see if you can shift your awareness from what's happening on the screen to the viewer in the audience looking at the screen. That's where we are. And that's what we're working to do is build that sort of gentle, curious awareness, noticing of what's going on. We're the person in the seat. We're not what's happening on the screen. But sometimes we just need a reminder. And then when we are able to make that shift, we can offer ourselves some compassion. We're able to notice what's happening. We can feel what's going on. And we can recognize that sometimes it's difficult. And then we can remind ourselves that we can move through this that we are capable of moving through this. We've always been capable of moving through this and that I just have to take the next step and allow myself to take the next step. So we're gonna jump into some practices now to explore those sort of feelings, that sort of curiosity of awareness and uh, some gratitude practice and some meta practice. And like I said, they're, they're individual practices that can be done by themselves, but I've kind of put them together in a way where they'll flow into one another so they can kind of just support each other in all of these ideas. So the first thing I would have you do is just kind of allow yourself to relax. How you arrived on this Zoom call um, might not be what the body needs at the moment. And that's okay. We can allow ourselves to kind of just take a second to relax wherever we are, you know, maybe readjust our positioning in our chair, take a couple deep breaths, let the shoulders drop a little bit. Just trusting that we're doing whatever the body needs in this moment here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move through our senses a little bit. And what this practice helps us to do is one helps us to relax, allow our body to relax. And it's a way for us to observe our experiences with this playful curiosity. So first I would have you just take notice of what do you hear? What do you hear in the space around you? What's the farthest sound that you can notice? No need to reach for it. Just see what falls on your awareness as you notice. And what's the closest thing you hear? just falls on your attention.
I'm moving from our hearing. You know, what do you see? If you have your eyes closed, you may want to just open them for a moment and just take a look around your space. Are there any colors that catch your eye? Shapes, textures. If you look above head or over your shoulder, what does that space look like? I'm just noticing all that space. And we can shift to, what do we smell? Is there any smells that are in our awareness right now? Anything we notice? Does it bring about any feelings when we notice these things? Now we can shift to taste. Is there any taste that's still sort of lingering in the mouth right now, in the mouth feel? Anything you notice? Now touch or feel. If we're sitting, what does the chair feel like? Resting against the sit bones. Or is there any just tension in the body that we happen to notice? If our palms are resting on our laps, what does that feel like for our palms to make contact you know, with, the, with the thigh of our legs? Just allow yourself to be curious about that experience. And just notice that we can notice. Now we can end this first practice and use it as an opportunity to jump into another practice, a little bit of gratitude practice. But first, just checking in with our hearts. You know, you may feel called to place your hand over your heart if you would like, but trust that you're doing whatever is right for you. But we can just notice this thing in our chest that's it's pumping blood throughout our body, helping to move that oxygen through our body so that we can be here, so we can breathe. We can continue to move and just live this life that we're experiencing. We can use that opportunity now to just really shift into some gratitude practice and bring our mind to something that we feel grateful for right now. It could be a person, it could be an experience, could be in any, any being. My dog comes to mind. It has these beautiful eyes that just fill me with joy when I think about it. When we take time to do gratitude practice and intentionally bring our awareness to those things in our lives, we learn to see the good that was always there. We just had to stop and notice. These things that really light up our lives that were there, that I can be grateful for, that help give me the courage and the ability to continue to move through life when I am met with difficult feelings. We'll use this now 
to move into the third practice, often called metta practice, uh, metta meaning loving kindness, unconditional love. But more simply, it can mean well wishes. And this practice is a way for us to continue to deepen our relationship with compassion and our feelings of empathy and connection to others, uh, learning to offer it to ourselves and to continuously expand it outward to all beings. You know, um, and we do this by saying and deeply reflecting on a few phrases that resonate with us. So I'm going to say a few phrases today. Um, if you bring this into your own life and your own practice, I encourage you to find some phrases that, that work for you, that resonate for you. You know, it's your personal experience and it should really resonate with your heart. Um, so this practice can sometimes be difficult for, for some people uh, initially to extend it outward to, to everyone. So when I teach and present it for the first time, I tend to start with a person that's easy to love. It's much easier for us to extend love to a person we feel deserves love or is easy for us to love. Uh, and this person sometimes is known as the benefactor. Um, the way that I like to think of it is, it's a person that when you think about them, you can't help but smile. So if you could, Bring to mind a person that when you think about them, you can't help but smile. When you think about them, it's almost as if your heart is smiling. What does it feel like for your heart to smile? Now with this person in mind, we're going to say a few phrases. You could repeat them after me if you feel called to do that, or you can just, just let them roll over you, just trusting you're doing whatever right for you in this moment. Uh, so with this person in mind, may they be happy. May they be peaceful. May they be free from suffering. And may they be healed. And staying with the same phrases, we're gonna turn our attention to ourselves and offer ourselves the same well-wishing and loving kindness. So now with our awareness to ourself, to our being, may I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free from suffering. And may I be healed. Um, before we close this part of practice, we can extend it to, to all beings, to the world. The same well wishes, hopes, feelings of loving kindness. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be free from suffering. And may all beings be healed. <sighs> Thank you.
as we close practice today, we can just take a moment to thank ourselves for pausing to just be here and notice our life in this moment. You took the time to do something for yourself. And that's something to celebrate. And when we come together in community, we're also supporting each other in our endeavors to be present for our own lives and helping each other to be present for their lives as well. So thank you for your time. I'll just leave the last few minutes open for if there are any questions or if anyone would like to add anything to the group or just thoughts and observations. This is an open space of community and just compassion at this point. Brian, on behalf of Mental Health Connecticut, I just want to say thank you for uh, doing our last session with Copper Beach. Um, I definitely needed that today. So thank you very much. That was really beautiful. Um, yeah, I just, I loved all of those pieces. I love how you strung them together. And it just was, was definitely a wonderful thing to do on a Monday. So thank you very much. That resonates. <laughs> Brian, um, I have a question. Well, first I want to do shout out to Susie because it's her birthday today. Um, but you know, I Thank struggle, you. I struggle with self-image. And you know, when I look in the mirror in the morning, I have this habit of kind of lifting up my now eye gown and looking at my body and just getting disgusted by it. And when you're in that moment, right? So, and I do it every day and it's a stupid thing to do, but I do it because I sometimes, I, I don't know if I just hope that when I look at my body in the morning, um, all the fat will be gone. I don't know why I do it, but how do I take that moment that I do that and transfer that to something that's positive as opposed to negative? You know what I mean? Like, how do I get myself out of this habit that sets me off into a horrible feeling in the morning? Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean, I, I just, um, it's, it's often difficult for us not to try and see what we believe to be is like the whole picture, right? Like we hold our idealistic self at this place that is, is never seems to never be where we are. Yeah. Um, and that's part of it, right? Is that we are holding this idealistic image of ourselves at this, at this distant place, right? So I closely tie uh, exercise and, and, and mindfulness practice together because uh, they for me they go very much hand in hand and I always tell people who I work with like you have to already see yourself as where you're telling yourself you want to be you have to wholeheartedly believe it like that that love for self has to come before anything that you physically see with your eyes um, because what ends up happening is you start to shift into, uh, thank you, thank you very much for coming. Um, you'll start to take every little action, you know, and you are able to more readily and available, like return to this present moment and can catch yourself when you start to notice, like I'm going here, that mm -hmm. that's the story that I'm, I'm starting to follow. It's okay. I see that I'm following that story. It's okay. I don't have to follow that story and the more we sort of fall in love with the process of wherever it is that we are hoping to go we start to recognize well there is there is no difference between the destination and what I'm doing now if I fall in love with the process in, in the moment you know um, and that takes work I, I really like to emphasize that it's called mindfulness practice for a reason because it is it's a, it's a practice and something that we continue to to come back to and it's it's not always easy, um, but every time we we do, it's it's, it's for our, it's for our benefit, you know. And starting to incorporate some practices that really get you to reflect on those things that you are grateful for, um, mm -hmm. those things that that do bring you light, 
it starts to shift what the default is, you know, and no longer are we looking for those things that we want to change. Um, but we start to recognize the things that we have that give us the fuel and the ability to bring about those changes that we are working towards without being attached to the outcome of it. Yeah, yeah. I think mirrors suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to just suits. We're bathing suits. Yeah, mirrors. Yeah, bathing suit season now. It's like, oh. <laughs> Well, we're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're very obsessed with 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 mirrors and and, and like numbers on the scale, and yeah. it pulls us away. Well, like, how do you feel? You know, if you were to get rid of all of this stuff that is become so like associated with the ideal of goodness or greatness, and you really tune into like just like, well, how do you feel as a person today? Right. You know, and and, and feeding that that uh, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I have to, I have to totally remember that. I really, I, I do. And I get stuck in this self image place that just sets me off on the wrong direction. And so maybe I just should not be doing that in the morning and instead replace that with a mindfulness exercise that will help me appreciate the goodness and of everything around me. Like I loved the whole, you sound like there, when you said that there was a cardinal literally right on in front of my window chirping it was like oh my god it came at a perfect moment so i have to appreciate that yeah it's it's practice but well thank you yeah glad, glad it resonates well i don't want to hold you past the time that i you know set aside for today um, I mean, I'm glad to hang on for a little bit if anyone has any questions, but if not, you are, feel free to go and continue your day. I, I wish you guys well. I hope this resonated of a benefit and uh, you're able to take some of this and apply it to, to your lives. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, read the chat. They put some some good news, good ideas in the chat. You're absolutely right, Brayden and Jess. You know, like, I love you. You're carrying me through this. I'm I'm here because of, you know, yeah, you're right. See the positive. Just take so. seven days. Flip that switch. Flip the seven script. days. All right. I'm going to try. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Brian. Of course.